Today I am going to share the top seven mistakes I see artists make when they're starting out with colored pencil. I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Now, I have to say to start off, if you find that you are making one of the things that I call a mistake, but you like the results that you're getting, there's nothing wrong with that because it's art. There are no mistakes if you like the results that you're getting. The only time I think there's a real mistake is if you're doing something that is making the work not archival. But when I call these mistakes, this really applies to those who are not getting the results that they want. They're trying to do similar techniques to what I'm doing, but they're not getting the results they want. So I've got some solutions for you for those issues. Number one would be not having enough layers. This is one of the most common things that I see happen, especially when an artist is trying to blend with odorless mineral spirits like I do is they don't get enough layers on there. Before I ever blend out with odorless mineral spirits, I generally have three to five layers of pigment of colored pencil on the paper before I blend. If you don't have enough layers, what happens is you have the little white dots of the paper that are showing through right now. You put the odorless mineral spirits on top of that and you still have all the white showing through. What the heck? That didn't happen when you painted. The reason is that I've got more pigment on the paper. If you don't have enough pigment, when the odorless mineral spirits, it sort of dissolves the waxy binder stuff when it dissolves that pigment into the paper and you don't have a lot of pigment on there, not much is going to happen. The white of the paper is still showing through. So that is going to cause you not to get the results you're probably trying to achieve. The next mistake would be pushing too hard on the pencil too soon. What happens when you do this is you are burnishing. You are kind of polishing the pencil onto the paper and you flatten the tooth of the paper. All of the paper that you're using have these little hills and valleys, these nooks and crannies. And when you push hard with the pencil, you flatten those out. Now that is a technique. There are times when it is good to burnish. I will generally do that towards the end of when I know I don't need additional layers. Because when you flatten that out, it won't take very many more layers, being that there's nothing for that pencil to grip onto. For the techniques that you guys are seeing me do in my colored pencil work, I'm not pushing very hard, except with white. I tend to push pretty hard with the white just to get that to really stick and show up well. But normally I don't add a lot of pressure. I'm using a very light hand in order to keep from damaging the tooth of that paper. And the nice thing is if you're using the odorless mineral spirits, you don't have to push hard to get nice smooth blending. The odorless mineral spirits will do it for you without damaging the tooth of the paper, which means that many more layers, which gives you that much more control in your end piece. When I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits, all of my work has probably about 20 layers total, sometimes more, but there are a lot of layers there. And so if I had burnished, if I pushed too hard too soon, there's no way I'm going to get that many layers. Mistake number three, not keeping your pencil sharp enough. Going back to those nooks and valleys, those hills and crannies? I said that wrong. Those nooks and crannies, hills and valleys, however you want to word it, in the paper, those little ridges in there, that the pencils, if your pencils are not sharp enough, they're not able to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Now, the odorless mineral spirits will help to get that into them, but you'll get even better, smoother results if you're keeping your pencil very sharp. It'll keep your lines very clean, and then again, get better, more smooth, even coverage on the paper itself. So keep those pencils sharp. Just because it's sharp enough the color is still coming out on the pencil, that doesn't mean the pencil is really sharp enough. Sharpen those. The next mistake that I often see happen is where an artist is not using the right kind of paper for the techniques that they're trying to do. Certain papers just don't yield themselves well to certain techniques. For me, I have found that Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press, 140 pound name is way too long, watercolor paper is one of my favorites to work with. The Stonehenge is another one that I like, but only the ones sold in the individual sheets. The ones sold in the pads, those are more of a vellum finish. They are just too smooth. Some papers like Bristol Vellum, I used to use use that for colored pencil. Again, very smooth, too smooth. So there's not enough for the pencil to grip to. So I'm not able to get all of the layers that I want. So I felt that I couldn't get the color saturation quite what I wanted. Now that doesn't mean that those are bad papers. It means it does not work well for my techniques. Choosing a paper that works well for the techniques that you're using is a very big deal. Another paper that I'm really liking right now is Canson Me Tens. That one has a really nice tooth to it. I've used that in different colors, like the black. Probably not my favorite because you can't get the color as bright as you would get on white paper, but you can get some pretty cool effects. I've used the light blue. I really like that one. So that's another paper that I can definitely recommend for the techniques that I personally use. Next on my list is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I will see artists make. And in any medium, not just colored pencil, but calling the work finished too soon, not finishing the artwork. Look at these two images. This is the same bird. That first bird, when I first layered my first couple of layers on that, it looks terrible. 
it kind of looks like I shaded it in with my feet. There's no definition, no detail, but it's not wrong. It's not bad. It's not finished. That's the key there. Look what happens when I continue to work on it. That's a pretty big difference. And this is something that I see so often with beginner artists is that they just call it finished too soon. They just get those first few layers blocked in and they're like, yeah, I'm done. No, that was the whole point of making sure that you didn't damage the tooth of the paper in point number two, not pushing too hard, is that you could get more layers. Just having color and pigment on the paper does not mean that it's finished. Keep layering and get all the detail in there. If you're going for realism, keep working on it until it looks how you want just be aware too colored pencil it's a very slow medium these videos that you see all of us on youtube doing these speed videos they give you the impression that you can get something done in a night or two nights you know it's a very quick medium it's not it is slow it takes me a week actually i've spent a couple weeks on the one that's behind me and it's still not finished but it takes a very very long time to get these finished and if you can get that in your head really understand that going in i think it'll make you a little bit more patient and more likely to put the time needed into finishing that project project. Don't expect to finish something in a single night. It's probably not going to look all that great. Spend the time needed to reach the goal that you've set for yourself and get the look that you're going for. Number six is scribbling. Having your pencils go this direction and now I'm going this direction and now I'm over here and you can see these lines going all over the place. It's one thing if you're actually trying to cross hatch, but if that is not the look you're going for, if you really want a nice smooth, evenly, softly blended, whatever it is you're working on, work your pencil instead in small little ovals or small little circles and let one area overlap into the next. You will get a much, much smoother end result. Doing these straight, harsh lines, you, and especially when they're going in different directions, it really does look like it was scribbled. If you can work in these small little ovals, these little circular, circular, circular shapes, I can't talk, work in these circular shapes, that will give you such better results. And those straight lines back and forth, even if the straight lines are all going in the same direction, you end up with these harsh start and stop points where it, you, your hand switches directions. If you're going in ovals, you won't have that. You'll get that nice smooth finish. Last is starting with a bad drawing. It doesn't matter how much you master all of the other things that I talked about. If your drawing is inaccurate, if your goal is realism, but your drawing is inaccurate, it's not going to get better the more you start shading and coloring things in. Don't start shading and coloring until you get your drawing exactly how you want it to be. Because once you start drawing, if you look at something and you're like, ah, I think the face is a little off, but it's probably okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a colored pencil. Once you start with the pencil, you can't easily fix stuff. If you realize an eye was a little too far to the left, a little too far to the right, too big, too small, whatever, that's not something you can easily fix with colored pencil. Make sure that your drawing is 100% accurate before you ever start coloring things in. Does that mean that you, you want to trace things for a while while you get the hang of drawing things? Go for it. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great way to learn to draw better. Does that mean that you just need to spend more time practicing on the drawing side of things? Then that may be what you need to do. But make sure that your drawing is perfect. Don't rush through the drawing, do it quickly, and then expect it to look realistic in the end when it turns out it was not drawn right. I was looking on Instagram just yesterday and this one artist was drawing dogs and the heads were like this big and the muzzles were these little, I mean, these dogs would be deformed if they were real dogs. His shading was phenomenal. His highlights, everything was good. And I don't think this was the goal of, of a stylized look because he claimed he was a realist artist. So this was just an issue of he was starting with bad drawings to start with. His, again, shading, his blending techniques. He was really, really good, but he was jumping into that too soon. He needed to spend a bit more time to get that initial outline exactly how it should be if he wanted to reach his goal of having it look very realistic. And as I said, if you are using any of these things that I'm calling mistakes and you are happy with your results, then they're not mistakes. It's art. Uh, these tips are for those who are trying to get their work to look more realistic and aren't happy with the results that they're currently getting. Have you already subscribed? I have five videos. I keep doing this jazz hand things at the end. It's supposed to be five, but really that's ten. Five videos every week. That's a lot of videos, all art videos, all aimed to help you with your business and marketing of your art, to give you tips, and I've got tutorials and live streams, and if you are an artist, this is just a good place for you. I'll see you guys on Saturday. No, wait, that's not right. I'll see you guys on Tuesday.